Let's turn to the U.S. now, where the White House is searching for a leak. Not the plumbing kind. This is an intelligence leak. We told you about it yesterday. A pro-Iranian source released secret U.S. documents on Friday. And what do they show? Israel's battle plans. How they're preparing to attack Iran. What weapons they will use. And what the targets could be. Reports say it was leaked by some in the U.S. government. In public, the White House is furious. They want to plug this leak. Uh, we're deeply concerned, and the president remains deeply concerned, uh, about any leakage of classified information into the public domain. Uh, uh, that, that is not supposed to happen, and it's unacceptable when it does. So he's deeply concerned about that. Not everyone buys that, though. Some experts say the U.S. leaked this document on purpose. Why would they do that? Perhaps to build pressure on Israel or maybe to give Iran a heads up. And it's not unprecedented. The U.S. government is notorious for its leaks. Barely anything stays in the system. It inevitably ends up on American media platforms. And it's not a recent problem either. Let me take you back to 1794. 1794, the U.S. and Britain signed a bilateral treaty. The idea was to settle outstanding issues from America's independence. But a U.S. senator had other plans. He leaked details of this treaty to the public, especially the concessions made by American officials. As a result, the treaty became unpopular. It barely managed to pass the Senate. Now, this episode tells you a couple of things. One, Washington's leak culture is very old. Some people call it a way of life in the U.S. Capitol. And two, the culprit is often within. Most leaks are not the result of investigative journalism. They are voluntarily revealed by officials. Consider last year's Pentagon leaks. U.S. intelligence on Ukraine, Israel and South Korea was leaked. And the source? A 21-year-old working in the National Guard. Or the 2010 WikiLeaks. The source was a U.S. soldier and analyst. He shared thousands of documents with WikiLeaks. Now, these were meant to sabotage the U.S. government, to expose Washington, maybe because of a sudden conscience check or maybe some policy differences. But these are lone wolf leaks. They're done by a single government official. Sometimes the government itself is the leak. Like the Plame Affair of 2003. Valerie Plame was a secret agent of the CIA. Her own government revealed her identity to the media. They basically blew her cover on purpose. Do you know why? Because her husband opposed the U.S. war in Iraq. And that's a key part of leaks. It's not always about the greater good or accountability or even conscience. Sometimes it's about settling scores. Maybe a senator has an axe to grind with a the president. Then the senator's office can leak something against the White House. So the motive is never the same. Which brings us to the logistics. How does a wannabe league get access to secret intel in America? Because the pool is quite large. Around 23 million Americans work for the government. That's federal plus state plus local. 23 million in all. Many of them have security clearances. Meaning the right to see secret intel documents. Look at this report from 2014. Back then, 5.1 million Americans had security clearance. That's 1.5% of their total population. Most of them have immediate access to confidential data. Do you see the problem here? Too many people have access to secrets, which means more chances of a leak. Another issue is storage. The U.S. government classifies more than 50 million documents every year. These are sometimes printed, sometimes shuttled between agencies, and sometimes misplaced. Consider what happened to Donald Trump and Joe Biden. When Trump left office, his team packed away secret documents. Some of them were later found in his Florida mansion. That too inside a bathroom. Biden had a similar experience. Classified files were found at his basement in Delaware. Again, a case of ignorance. So what is the U.S. government doing to stop this? Well, in 2011, they set up a task force. The plan was to crack down on leaks in the government. Even the laws are quite strict. Some leaks have faced up to 15 years in jail. Some are still absconding from the U.S., like Edward Snowden, who is holed up in Russia. Yet the leak culture is not ending. American media says it's not our job to protect secrets. It is the government's job. But the U.S. government appears too big and too careless. The world may not care about domestic U.S. leaks, but when it concerns other countries, when, in, when it involves other countries, it may be a problem. Like Israel is not happy about the latest leak. 
it endangers their strike on Iran. So the White House needs to get a grip on its people because these leaks are not just political gossip, they have real world consequences. First Post decodes the U.S. election, explains how America chooses its president, your primer on the race to the White House, everything you need to know about how America votes, and its global implications. U.S. Election Explained, every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.